Hello, welcome to the IPFS uh, Package Manager Special Interest Group Weekly Catch Up for Tuesday, 21st of May 2019. I am Alex, I'm making brain on the internet. I will be your host in the game of what we did last week, what we're blocked on, and what we're going to do next. Uh, can I please get a volunteer note taker? Thanks, Andrew. Okay, uh, I will go first. Uh, last week, um, finished the async await conversion for MFS and the importer and the exporter. Uh, there is a, I was also at DTN Conf. I did a demo of NPM on IPFS on stage, uh, and that went really well. I actually did it offline because there's a weird little exclusion zone of Wi-Fi around the podium. Like in the in the <laughs> audience, it was the Wi-Fi was perfect, and the minute you step on stage, no IP address. Uh, but I think I've been running it repeatedly uh, just to make sure that it still actually worked, uh, which meant that it was all cached in, in the IPFS repo. So, so hooray, everyone was really happy. Uh, I spoke to some people afterwards and they were very excited. I tried to you know, plug the Pakote PR um, in the hope that they would comment on the issue and maybe get a bit more attention to that and get that merged. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's still ongoing. So next up uh, is uh, look at the performance of the async await refactor, um, more specifically for package managers to try and update and like give NPM and IPFS a bit of love, uh, update the JS IPFS version that underpins it all. Uh, I've got access to um, ECS now, so I can deploy it on a scalable cluster rather than just like one machine that's prone to falling over occasionally. So that's going to be super good. Uh, I also started chatting about bringing. Um, NPM in a box to uh, IPFS camp, which is even quite nice. So, you know, I did the first thing of any good project and bought a bunch of hardware. Uh, when that turns up, then then we'll see where that goes. Uh, cool, that's going to be me. Does anyone have any questions? Awesome. Uh, Andrew, over to you. Uh, sorry, I only just finished writing my own notes in the grip pad. Um, I have been doing two different things, I guess, mostly. Um, I finished off the writing up my research into more decentralized publishing work, um, kind of come up with a couple of terms around uh, making resolution resilient to uh, availability problems in individual registries whether that be someone deleting something or the registry no longer being available or uh, you being offline or behind a corporate firewall um that's linked to uh, we'll talk with Eric about some of those topics a little bit more uh, i also then did some brainstorming on what decentralized publishing on npm would look like so uh from kind of the initial steps, basically trying to take everything that Alex has already been doing as part of the Pakote patch and say like, well, from basic starts, where does that lead you? Uh, which then I actually kind of like went through and tried to do and tried to publish something myself today and to reuse it from level one to four. Uh, turns out level three, is completely wrong uh, and does not work in the way that we expect at all. Uh, you can't pass a packument to npm install. It doesn't accept it. You have to um, you have to set up what is essentially like a very simple thing that pretends to be a registry and pass it as the registry flag. Uh, if you try and pass anything that isn't just a name to npm install or you put it in your package JSON and say npm install from my package JSON, if it looks like a URL or a git path, like a, a, a URL identifier to a git resource or a local file path, it will basically always expect there to be a package JSON in whatever it gets back. So if you give it the URL to a packument, it goes, oh, there's no package JSON here. This doesn't work. Like, I wasn't expecting to get JSON. I was expecting to get an archive of a single release. So I literally just posted uh, um, two minutes before the call 
my investigation and a rework of level three, level four. Um, and that works really nicely. There's some tooling we could build around it that would basically allow for either taking small chunks of the NPM on IPFS mirror from upstream and bringing them down locally or uh, to be able to publish your own single packments in a simple form onto your local gateway and to be able to use them and then have other people be able to use them. Um, also had some calls uh, regarding the NPM on IPFS roadmap, the IPFS camp, and I've got a couple more of those. I think a couple, I want to say, coming on Friday. Uh, and I also have yet to get around to merging all of the issue documentation stuff in the um, package manager's repo. So I definitely want to get that done. And other than that, I'm fairly open. So if anyone wants to try and put something on my plate that needs investigating, otherwise I will go and I have not thought too much about what else I'll be up to this week. That's about me. Jessica? Uh, like you, I just finished typing in what I did this week. Um, it, honestly, not a tremendously productive week. I apologize. Um, we cleaned up the GitHub labels, finally got rid of Waffle's automatic in progress thing because Waffle is dead. Um, if any of you are interested in the what replaces Waffle discussion, hit me up and I can point you toward a long series of um, comments in a GitHub issue. All right, Andrew, I will find those for you and send it to you. Yeah. Your notes aren't showing up in the crit pad for me, by the way. Oh. Yeah, me neither. Oh, crap. I'm, I just put them in 11th February. <laughs> oh, how did I even do that? <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody else want to go while I paste those into the new crit pad? <laughs> Or by the last one. <laughs> Jim, any update? Um, not a whole lot of updates. Uh, I guess over in, um, I guess, IPFS in web browsers land, and ex still experimenting with web package, and I enhanced that. It's not quite a demo yet, but I've got like a little web extension that, that um, intercepts when you click on things in the, a specific domain and it loads um, websites that have been uh, distributed using uh, this uh, HTTP sign exchanges, which is a Google Chrome feature. And, and so it's pretty neat, but it's a tricky thing to roll out as a dem demo because I have to keep purchase. Um, I'd have to publish an extension and all sorts of things. So I might just do that, but there's a lot more work to get it to a point where I can show it to people. So, Sounds cool. That looks good now, Jessica, I can see that. All right. I don't even know where I found that link to February. I, I thought David wasn't on this call. Um, so yeah, refactor the GitHub lab labels a bit. If anybody cares to know about the replacement for waffle discussion, if that is re that thread is relevant to any of your interests, let me know and I can um, show you in the direction of that discussion. Sort of an interesting one. Um, a few minor edits to the, the cladistics tree diagram. The next step, um, Andrew, you had a, a good point about seeing how that overlaid with your integration levels that you've been talking about this week. Um, did a little work with personas, rewrote the README for NPM on IPFS. Um, thank you. I think Alex, you merged that. Somebody, somebody merged that. Thank you. Um, we had some talks about the roadmaps in the IPFS camp, which we'll continue doing. Moved to Angry Cats 2000 miles. Um, and this week, again, um, just want to, I, I think my big focus this week is whatever I can do to help um, facilitate all of us figuring out what we want to do vis-a-vis -vis NPM and IPFS or some other thing for the camp and sort of a more immediate sort of tactical roadmap for the next two months, I think is probably the, the most important thing to figure out this week. One other thing I forgot to mention, I also um, collated a 
long list of package manager related academic papers. Um, half of them I already collected and stored uh, locally in some notes. And then I was going through and being like, ah, this would be useful to other people. Uh, it turns out very useful. Lots of people on Twitter seem to. Twitter love that. Yeah. I have not read all of them. <laughs> some of them are rather in depth. Uh, something, one other thing for next week as well. On Monday, it's a bank holiday in the UK, so I don't expect Less as well. Yeah, I think the spring, the spring week uh, holiday uh, over the, the autumn one's a week off. Yeah, yeah, of course, I need to get up to RCI to work every time. I think that's everyone's updates. We have a we have a new joiner. Uh, it's called uh, Andrew. Uh, Do you want to uh, say anything to the to, to the internet? <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't catch the last bit. I just wonder if you want to introduce yourself uh, and say, you know, uh, anything about package managers. Uh, no, I'm just joining in because I'm interested in the work that you're doing. Um, so uh, I think um, the use case of um, publishing snapshots uh, versions of software, and then depending on that snapshot and keeping depend on, depending on it, even though upstream might have deleted it, uh, those kind of uh, situations, it uh, could uh, be a really nice fit. Yeah, I guess you need to make sure there's uh, a good amount of kind of long-term archiving effort to keep those things there. It's easy to to do the ad, but there's not necessarily always going to be someone uh, connected that has all of those old archives. Um, but maybe Filecoin will eventually encourage people to uh, keep those things around. Well, um, you can make uh, the responsibility to keep a hold of those things your own responsibility. Like without becoming the uh, authoritative source, uh, you can make sure it the things you care about stay online, and I think that's super useful. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree that it feels like there's a lot of people expect someone else to be responsible for their own open source packages, uh, and encouraging people to take a little bit more responsibility uh, without it being as long as it's not painful to do um, if it's easy then I think a lot of people and businesses already do this. They recognize the risk and they will uh, buy enterprise software for them. Um, but there's no reason why individuals and small do the same thing. Um, yeah, on that topic, yeah, I, I just think there's a broad area of UX research that that probably falls on our what we're, where we're working it, both health indicators and like how can you be how can the, you communicate to the user that you know the content that they can use today they can use tomorrow or can they rely on it to be available into the future Cool. Uh, any other questions? Amazing. In that case, I declare this uh, weekly catch up of the Package Manager Special Interest Group closed. Hurrah. See you all on the internet. Bye.